What's up my folks? I hope everyone is doing great and everyone's having a good day or evening whenever this comes to you. Um, let's talk a little, I've had a, a bunch of questions. I know I hadn't really been uh, replying and talking to a lot of people on the, online. I've been on the phone a lot with you guys, but uh, I just haven't had the time. I, it's been a lot of sleepless nights. I mean, between these pups and uh, and everything in my back, I just I haven't been getting much sleep. You know, I'm having to wake up every three and a half, four hours to put bitches on pups and let them feed and everything else. But let's talk a little bit about um, some other things. I had some questions about, and and this is for the guy that asked me about the female didn't take. Okay, this is the same thing I have with her. Every morning, the first thing I do is I get up. And I look at my females. I come out here and I water my dogs and uh, fly spray them. And then I um, I check them out. I check to make sure, see how much water they've drinking. Check their gums, make sure everything's good. Um, and really, really go over everything with those dogs. Because I've had them. I know the people will tell you that pyometria comes on, you know, several weeks after the heat. Well, you get, she didn't take, okay? She was bred, but she did not take. So... I've actually had them the pyometra come on like two or three months. When they start swelling, see how her back end has, has not went down yet. You want to really keep an eye on them. Make sure, make sure that they don't start uh, drinking a whole lot of water, peeing a lot. Uh, make sure they don't have any discharge. I ran her on a cycle of antibiotics just to make sure, because it's it's when you skip the heats or when you miss with them, time after time. Okay, if you're not going to breed your female, go ahead and get her fixed. If you know you're not going to breed her and you're just going to have her for a house dog and, and you don't care nothing about having puppies off of her, I suggest go ahead and getting her fixed. I got a new collar for you inside, girl. This one's got to go, this old POS. But uh, anyway, go ahead and start and have her fixed. I'm, that's my best advice to you because if you wait, now this will be, I skipped her last heat. This dog here is a phenomenal, phenomenal producer for us. I mean, the dogs that were coming out that came off of her are excellent. I mean, beyond excellent. I'm so happy with them. And so I'm, I, I, went, I really wanted to get another litter this time off of her. I skipped one and tried to breed her again. She didn't take. That's when you run into problems, okay? When you, you can't go too many skips. That's when Pymetra will come on. If you're going, if you're going to breed the dog, go ahead and breed her. Breed her by two and a half two, you know three two and a half is a good age <laughs> even younger if you have to but go ahead and get a litter out of her if you know you're going to breed her and she's worthy of being bred because we didn't breed this dog until she's about two and a half okay we missed a few heats on her and i said we got to breed her and she was such a great dog i bred her now her offspring is really really showing nice for us they're really hunting good they're they're put together good they have all the tools of the trade and, and I really, really like them. Um, and they're smart. They're smart. I mean, you can, uh, like with Tank, if, if you don't want him to catch something, you yell at him. And he'll, he'll like on a pig, he's going to try to catch it. But he listens. You know what I mean? Some of these dogs listen real well. Like uh, when, when you're catching with them, once you, you can, all you got to do is yell at Tank, my hog, my hog. And he'll let the hog go. He'll let the hog go. He'll look up at you and let him go. And that's a very rare thing. That's a real, that's from a lot of time with him, okay? And, and spending time with him and teaching that when I break him. When I was working on playing with him, when I break him off of the toy, I'll tell him, my hog, my hog. And he get, you know, for hundreds of times doing that, they get they get used to it. But really, if, if they start swelling up in that back, you touch them a lot right there and if they're tender, Take them to the vet. You don't want to risk it because it, pyometra is a killer. It'll kill your female. I mean, you'll lose her forever. That's my advice is to keep an eye on that shit. If she starts drinking a whole lot of water, uh, a lot more than usual, uh, take her to the vet. Seriously. Um, something's wrong with her. I, I Like every morning, I give them all my dogs fresh water. I fly spray them, whatever, Happy Jack's kennel spray them, whatever I got to do. And then I... um. And in, in the evening, I, I, I dumped their old water out that was there for the day. What's the matter? Something itching you? Yeah. But, um, and then I go ahead and, and, and put fresh water in it so I can keep an idea of what's going <laughs> Keep an idea of what uh, they're drinking. What are you doing, old man? What up?
but uh you know that's that's the best thing i can tell you to do is is if if you're going to breed them breed them if you're not go ahead and have them fixed because the uh, pine meter is a killer it will it'll take your female from you um we'll talk a little bit about other things real quick uh had some people asking about worm burrs and stuff like that and i'll show you all this other litter this is a this here's a litter off of rusty's brother I got the other bitch, I got the bitch on the chain on the other side of the yard. She's starting to get where she's ready to uh, get away from them a little bit when they start acting like that, when they're trying to get away from them, they don't want to lay with them, and, you know, when they're not laying a long time with them, go ahead and uh, put your female off the chain. But they're pretty good looking pups. I lost a lot stillborn, but uh, they're, they're very nice looking pups still, what we got left out of them. I actually made this room, this is my laundry room, I built this when I remodeled this room I made it to two whelp litters in climate control you know for first-time females keep feed out okay people are asking what the feed I'm using what kibble I'm using I'm using the Canix 3225 32 protein 25 fat grain free um, I switched to that I was using the value pack but I've not been happy I was ha very happy with the value pack for a while and it just seemed like something I guess things change in it, you know, like I don't know if they changed the recipe or whatever, but um, it, it sure has uh, made a difference. It, uh, it, uh, I don't know what's going on with it, but I, I, I switch feed because I want my dogs to get nutrition, not have problems. They were starting to have skin problems and everything else, you know, maybe it's just from having that too much kibble at that time, but this Canix seems to work very well. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's about the same price as a value pack, you just don't get as much, you know. But, yep, there they are. People are asking to see those. That's what they look like. Just plain Jane looking little buckskin pup. Pretty though. I think they're pretty. Alright, let's talk about parasites and stuff. You know, don't y'all start waking up. They're starting to see and hear now. Okay, worming these pups. What do I'm using? Two weeks old. Okay, 14 days. Right there. Good look at it. See that right there? 50 milligram per milliliter. This is not the same as Nemex. You cannot use it the same dosage as Nemex. Okay, you'll overdose your dog. Look up your uh, your dosage, all right? My advice is to get a very small, with each tenth of a milliliter, you know, where you can see each tenth. See, I don't know if y'all can see that, but the lines are, every tenth you got a line on these. Now, a two pound puppy takes 0.18. So, right about there. That's all you're going to give them, okay? Less than two-tenths of a cc. Very small amount for those pups. Get a very good, accurate syringe to worm them puppies with. Now, for the older dogs, if you're not going to breed them, you're not in the breeding lineup for a while. This right here works wonders. Now, they say there's, there's stuff that happens with it, but you can get this at Tractor Supply. You give it to proper dose. I'm not going to give the dose on over here. You can find all this online. Proper dose them three days in a row. It'll kill tapes also, and it'll pull the heads out of them. It works well. If you don't, if you have one that's in the breeding lineup, and you don't want to uh, to risk, because this will make them go sterile for a couple of months. They say. I don't know. I, I never risked it. If I know I got a stud dog, I don't use. I don't use it, you know, if I got him where I'm wanting to breed him for a few months, you know, I won't use it. What I do use is the, uh, the Prins of Quintanil. Now, I got these from online from this guy right here. It's probably the same thing as fish tapes, but uh, it seems these are 60-pound capsules. There's five of them in here. I want to say they are only like $30 shipped, but you can take these, say your dog's 30 pounds, open them up, dump them out. 
split the difference, put them back in the capsule, get you some vi uh, some capsules if you can, you know, the, the kind that you can buy that doesn't have anything in them, or find something like a vitamin or something that's got it in it, pull them apart, dump the vitamin out, put that in it, you know, and you can pretty much figure it out your dosage wise and uh <clears throat> dose your dogs with this this is prinza quintanel or whatever they call it's just four tapeworms and use this accordingly um that works very well now for your have some questions about dogs getting sick like you uh, i made the video about coccidia had a lot of questions about it uh yes you can use cord i've had some people asking about the cord i only problem i've ever had with cord is they won't drink the shit my dogs will dehydrate and die before they drink cord. So what you have to do on the cord is get you a syringe like this, the big syringe. Pull up, like, I mix it. I, I want to I, I look at the dosage. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's like one ounce per cup of water is what the mix is. You can add dine to it, and it's a little sweeter. You can, you know, get them to drink it that way. And, uh, and I dose it. I put it down their mouth and make them drink it. You know, I, I pull out the what I think they need, I mix it up and I give them a, a dose of it that way. That way they get enough, they get enough in their system, I know for sure. But I use the cord as a preventative. I go around once a month or once every two months if I'm worried about it, you know, during the temperature swings and things like that in the hot part of the year, I'll, I'll keep the cord, you know, as a preventative. Um, if they get them, I wanna give a shout out to Mr. Lee. Thank you very much for the medication. This is a Albon solution. Now, what I do is I pour it in a bowl with a with a good sealable lid on it. And uh, now the Albon dosage is hot. You know, you got if they have coccidia, you want to use it by label, okay? If they do not have coccidia, I give it about fifty percent of the label. Say if your if your dog's forty pounds, it's by label for the first initial dose is going to call for twenty milliliters or twenty cc's of the Albon. Okay, that's five, so so it's five cc's per 10 pounds. What I do if, if the dog doesn't have it, but I'm worried, like after you've, they've been on putts for a couple of weeks, cleaning them up, and, and you know what I'm saying? You just want to keep a preventative. I have that dose, so I'll give them 2.5 cc's per 10 pounds. So, you know, it just, it, it, it seems to work that way. I do it a couple days in a row and I've never really had a problem with cord coming back. Now there's other things like if your dogs are getting sick, throwing up, things like that, and you can't figure out, take, take them to the vet. They'll probably give you some flagel or whatever, you know, it's, it, it's vet medicine. Keep that stuff on hand. Try to keep all your stuff on hand. Get everything before you have your litters. It's, it's much safer that way. And uh, you'll, you'll do better. As far as like the females, not taking care of them. You, some, you may just be leaving them in there too long. Take your females out. Let them, let them have their own time. You know, I'm, I've, had, I've been having to uh, wake up every three and a half, four hours and put the females on them because they're, they're just tired of being, you know, cooped up with them. So you, you let them get out and you let them feed. And then when she, when she stands up, go ahead and take her away from them. If you don't, you're going to have accidents. Not necessarily laying on them, but they'll step on them. They'll be rough with them. I lost a beautiful little fem one of the little uh, buckskin females because I fell asleep on the couch while she was feeding and she stepped on him. She and didn't get off of him. I mean, or her. And um, it, it's very sad when that happens. You know what I mean? And it was my fault because I didn't stay awake while she was feeding. I fell asleep. I was overly tired, and and that happens. And it it, it, it they don't have to be real small. This was just a few days ago, and um. And you'll start losing pups, and uh, it's real, real sad when when that happens, you know. Um, especially, you know, when when you really like the, the the way they're put together, and you really love the dogs. I mean, we love these dogs. I mean, these dogs. I owe these dogs a lot. I owe these dogs my life, basically. I mean, these dogs my whole life have kept me out of trouble. I knew I couldn't get in trouble. No one would take care of my dogs. As a teenager, while other people were getting into bullshit, I'm, nah, nah, I can't hang with that bullshit because if I go to jail or juvenile or whatever that crap is, uh, my dogs are going to be in real situation because they were my responsibility, even as a child. You know, what I had was my responsibility, and I take that very seriously. Um, they, You owe them that much. You owe them to be taken well care of, Okay. Even your little babies. I mean, these these babies re require you being there with them. Some females you can uh, 
you know, are good mamas and they're really good and, and that's a blessing. But a lot of times they're not. A lot of times they're really, they're really difficult <laughs> and uh, especially first time mamas. So if they're starting to be rough with them, not wanting to take care of them, pushing them, you know, stepping on them, shit like that, laying on them on purpose. They're, they're tired of them. Go ahead and, and put, them, put them somewhere for a little bit where they can have their own time. And uh, I leave them alone for three, four hours and then bring them back in there to them. Now, if you put them on the chain during that time, make sure you clean their, their teats off really good. You know what I mean? You don't want nothing to be on the ground that they laid on and getting these pups. Uh, clean their teats off real good. And then, uh, you know, I wash them with warm soapy water and rinse them real good and dry them. And then I put her back in here. Do it with both of them. Because the little, the uh, the other pups in there, she's starting to get the same way. So, you want to make sure that uh, you give her her, her time away. Where she, where she, when she, when you come back in, she's running to them puppies, checking on them, cleaning them up, uh, taking care of them that way. Now, she, this female will take care of the dogs. She'll clean them. She'll nurse them. But when she's done doing that, she wants away from them. It's just the way they are. So that's nothing unusual, okay? It's actually very common. Um, but so just just remember those things, you know, and 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 you'll you'll fare out a lot better. Uh, like you guys that's been emailing me and, and and stuff, I try to email you my number back if I'm missing you. Yeah, I, a lot of times, like I say, I lay these, the phone down and I don't even pick it up until I get a chance to. Uh, so just continue on. I'm going to be going to town today after I feed this this morning feed and uh, go to the mail and uh, send a couple things out to people. But people were asking about the shirts. Look, I've, I've really, I don't really want to get into the shirts right now. A lot of people are asking, you know, am I still selling shirts? I got, I just had a 4X made and I had my other ones made for the people that have already ordered the shirts. But I, it's, the prices have went up so high and I can't expect you guys to pay what it costs and i'm up to twenty dollars a shirt now and it's sometimes up to fourteen dollars to send them so i lose four dollars right off the rip to send them sometimes so i don't i'm just do it as a favor for you guys right now until we can find something somebody else that can do it a more economical and and the shipping is so expensive right now through the post office it's just a mess so I don't really want to get into the shirts. I, I I wish I could, you know what I mean, but it's just getting where it's not it's not economically feasible because it's costing so much more. The value's not there. You know what I mean? I I'd like to sell the shirts for thirty dollars, including shipping, and everybody be ha be happy as long as I don't lose money. I don't care. But when I start losing money, that's when it starts. That's when I say no, no. You know what I mean? I can't afford to lose money on everything. So I hope y'all understand that. But um. Uh, you guys, uh, just just keep it with with the, your pups for now. Every two weeks. Now, when they're two weeks old, uh, that's what I use. People are asking what I use. That's it. When they're pups, until they get a little older, then I'll go to other things. Uh, of course, you know your older dogs. You want to ivermectin them. That's one tenth cc per ten pounds. Pull it out of the bottle. Take the needle off in their mouth. Now, it's some people mix it with water. I've never. I mean, you can pull a little water up in there to to cool it down for them, but you know, half a cc they'll they'll handle it. You know, just put it right in their mouth, and you're not going to overdose them like that. I mean, as long as they don't have heartworms. I mean, because we have given a dog one tenth cc per ten pounds every day for months, for months, because it it'll help skin problems. You know what I mean? If they have skin problems, um, so just keep that in mind too. That you know, everyone's so scared of ironic. It's better to have a little ivermectin in them as long as they don't have heartworms, you know, than to, to screw around and, and be scared of it. Because I personally, man, if you overdose them on them, what they'll do is they'll shake and tremble and all that. But I've never had them actually die on me from it. Um, now, the collars, okay? This was gifted to me uh, by a hunter. Uh, I got two people. This is a, a from the, the canine athletes. I don't know the guy. I don't... Uh, I'm not affiliated with any way with him. You know, I didn't even know know he was making collars or anything. But I got to give the man props. This is a pretty fine collar. Um, it was given to me by my, my buddy of mine, and uh, I'm really I really like them. And I went on the website. They're thirty dollars each. If you just got a couple dogs, these are real nice. Now I tell you, I'm doing business with Bulldog Supply Company out of Texas. 
They make a fine collar too. And it's a very affordable collar. I'd say it's as, probably as good as this collar here for half the price. Okay. So if you have more dogs, uh, you might want to check out the Bulldog Supply Company. Um, actually, I'm going to be calling him today too and ordering up new collars. I want to put new collars on all my dogs today. Uh, I'm, well, I'm going to order them all and try to get new collars for them all because, uh, it, you know, every year or two, I try to replace collars. And it's, I use the still water and I do like still water collars. I've never had a problem with them. They've lasted a long time. I've actually had to just take them off and throw them away because they smell, but the collar itself was still in great shape, you know. And, you know, you got to have what you have, you know, if they're for a, for the last year or two, it was, it was kind of, you couldn't go to the store and get collars unless you got them spiky ones like what's on Rita, you know, those, and they're junk, but you know, you got to have a, a good wide two inch thick collar. And that was the only game in town. And when you need a collar, you need a collar. You can't wait. So, but these right here are pretty damn nice collars. I, I mean, the craftsmanship looks good in them. They're durable feeling. And, uh, I'm pretty impressed with them. Pretty fine collar. And like I said, the other the other option that I found right now that have this kind of quality for a good affordable price is the Bulldog Supply Company. For you guys that was asking about collars and stuff, I will be doing a lot of business with the Bulldog Supply Company. He makes harnesses and uh, mill collars, all that stuff. So they're, they're really nice. So, and, you know, he might even make cut gear. I'm not sure. Uh, but I know that the the cut gear that I've been seeing that the boys that I hunt with use, it comes from, I want to say it's Swamp Dog. I think it's Swamp Dog uh, cut gear. And that, they're damn fine, damn fine cut collars and cut vests, you know. So anyway, guys, y'all take care. Y'all keep on bulldogging and keep them, keep them free of them worms and keep your dogs healthy and clean and doing well and i hope everyone is having a has a great day and uh i'll check back in with y'all when i can